as Rachel mentioned, this panel is going to be about retail media. It's one of the hottest topics that we're finding at the moment. We've been talking about it for a couple of years. And it's huge. We hear a lot about the eye-watering margins of retail media. Group M's anticipating that it's going to be a $229 billion business by 2029. However, there's still a lot of misconception around it. There's a lot of misunderstanding about what retail media really is. So uh, luckily, I'm joined by two experts who are going to shed some light on that for us today. Uh, Ranga, Jaron, I'm going to let you introduce yourselves. Welcome. All right. Uh, Hey everyone, I'm um, Jaren from Fairprice Group. So basically I head up the growth uh, for the business within Fairprice Group. So yeah, key focus for us, especially for this year, is really building up the retail media network uh, capabilities for us. Yep. Excellent, and Ranga. Hey, good morning everybody. How are you all doing? Awesome. Uh, I'm Ranga and I work for Publicist Media. And uh, leading up to this uh, role, I have worked um, as a consultant to retail media networks, I've been a fractional CMO in some of the retail media organizations. So excited here to share with you my perspective laced with what Publicis Media thinks about retail media. Thank you, John. Excellent. Well, welcome both of you and thank you for joining us. Um, just to flag that there is a poll in your app for this panel. Um, do you feel that retail media is well understood in the Southeast Asia region? Um, yes, well, I was hoping we'd get to 100% by the end of the session, but we've started well, so let's see how that goes. Um, guys, as I mentioned, there's some misconceptions perhaps around retail media. I want to start general and ask you both, what really defines a retail media network? Uh, Ranga, I'll throw to you first. I would broadly define retail media as any platform, publisher, or environment where we are able to identify high intent consumers, um, we could broadly structure that as a retail media, especially what's critical is you're able to activate uh, media buy against it, you're able to activate a consumer engagement against it to nudge the consumer through their purchase decision. That to me very broadly defines retail media. I would like to actually, um, I know this is a tech driven conversation, but I would actually say let us not undermine the definition of retail media by just limiting it to what you can do online, but there is an online, offline, and a hybrid version of what I think a retail media is. Excellent, we can dive a bit more into that, I think. Um, Jaron, how would you define a retail media well, network? Retail media, to, from my view, it's pretty much similar to uh, Rangan itself. So, I think in general, uh, retail media, as a retailer itself, I would say as long as you have the assets in place to activate, and you have a loyalty program to collect first party data, that's where you can actually start a retail media business unit to kind of monetize your assets or be like first party data, finding the right partners to work together on that piece as well. Yep. Excellent. I think you know, you've touched there on, on the strength of the data and I'm gonna get your view from the Fair Price Group in you know, your adventure in retail media and how that's going. Um, what for you are the core elements? What makes it attractive for a retailer and how have Fair Price really, you know, taken advantage so far of a retail media offering? Yep, so from Fairprice Group perspective, it's, uh, there are a couple of elements, right, when it comes to retail media. I think one is data collections. So we don't collect data for the sake of collecting data, that's for sure, right? I think it's important for us to know what do we need, what our advertisers need, and or slash brand needs, right? Then that's where we'll need to work backwards, having a proper use case. Then that's from there, then it will know like kind of what's the metadata required to collect, like be it from a loyalty program or be it from like a transactions, etc. So that's for that's for us. Uh, next point, it's uh, looking. At, I think it's key for us to look into the user journey, especially from our point uh, as a grocer, as a grocery uh, company, right? So knowing the user journey, then that's where we can plan the relevant assets to activate to engage our first party data on behalf of any advertisers or brands as well. That's for us. Yeah. I think those two are the, pretty much the key core elements. Yeah. yeah, and Ranga, for you, is this you know the strength in this first party data for retailers to get involved in retail media? Totally. Actually, today, a uh, lot of data is sitting, rich data is there, but they're all sitting in silos. But it's very important for a retail media network to unleash its potential that a data is made available, it is made measurable and attributable 
if you have these three elements to the data, then it is meaningful. Data on its own has no meaning if it's not made available, measurable, and attributable. Yeah, and I think this is, you know, this is where retail media is coming in. It's that activation of the power of the data. Like you say, you know, a lake of data is worthless until it's measurable and activated. And, and retailers are discovering this. There's you know, so much going on in the region. So many retailers really want to get involved in the retail media sphere. Ranga, you come from a storied background in retail media. How have you seen it develop? And how do you think it's being done well? I think it's still in early days of growth. Um, a lot of work has happened in uh, both. There are three um, broad pillars. One is the sell side, and then there is a buy side, and somewhere around there is the audience. And uh, um, right now, a lot of work is happening in um, integrating the sell and the buy side, and the narrative there is still emerging. Uh, there is no standardized process. Uh, especially in an environment like Southeast Asia, even for uh, platforms which are available consistently across uh, markets, you need to have uh, country-specific, platform-specific integration conversa conversations. Um, how the brands show up in those environments also um, are subject to how consumer tastes are and consumer cultures are. So uh, one size fits all will uh, not be able to take you across the line. Um, so the work that is going on is in identifying platform by platform, retailer by retailer, and the brand category, uh, nuances of that category, and stitching those uh, variables together. Uh, so a lot of heavy lifting is happening there. Uh, it is a lot of, as much as a lot of tech enablement is there, a lot of manual heavy lifting is going on to ensure the pipes are connected properly and the data flow is clean. Yeah, Jaron, how do you feel about that? On the uh, strategy specifically? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my view is I think for any retail media network themselves, they always come to, they always go to any advertisers or brands saying that, hey, we have a lot of first quality data and what's so not, right? But I think it will work backwards. I think it's important for retail media networks to kind of know what data that they have and also how does it fit into like specific industries and reach out to them as well to drive specific uh, intention or objectives. I think that's very important so. Uh, second one, it's, I think having said data, I think having a proper measurement framework and reporting framework, I think that's key as well. I think we do not want to go to advertisers and brands saying, hey, this is, we've like kind of reached X number of users, serve X number of impressions, deliver an impressive for us or what's not, right? But Really, I think the value from data monetization is where uh, what's the story that you can tell the advertisers or brands about their customers. I think that's very important as well to kind of like build like kind of the longevity with the advertisers or brand, like saying like, hey, we can do this next and what's so not. When rather than telling them, hey, we're cheaper, we're more efficient, we're more cost effective, then you just stop it there. That's my view. Yeah, I think you know that links back to what Ranga was saying earlier about you know the knowing what the power of your data is and who you can reach with it. Um, for, you know, you come from a retailer, uh, um, consumer goods uh, is your main area. I'm sure that's attractive for a retail media proposition. Is it just endemic brands that should be looking to advertise with you? Is the data on offer from players like Fairprice uh, attractive to a much wider scope of advertisers? All right, so for us, it's really beyond endemic brands, right? So right now for us, it's pretty much focusing on endemic brands. Those are like pretty much our bread and butter, right? Uh, Non-endemics, definitely. So, I mean, internally we did identify a couple of industries uh, that are relevant, working backwards, knowing who our audiences, right? Then how can it best fit in? As much as there's no way for us to kind of do kind of like close look measurements for those non-endemics. However, uh, it's an opportunity for them to kind of like drive more focus on the top of the funnel marketing stuff as well, using FairPrice data and assets as a channel. Yep, this one. Yeah, um, Ranga, is it as simple as trying to sell someone who's buying a toothbrush and toothpaste, or is it much wider than that? I mean, uh, first, as endemic brands, typically mostly FMCG brands uh, who are um, uh, out there in the retail media environment. Um, there is a lot of opportunity, and there are brands, including brands like automotive, batteries, uh, and the tires uh, who are coming on and trying to get uh, the best value out of retail media environment. Um, 
there is um, opportunity for brands beyond FMCG to actually unlock the full value. Um, the modus operandi might be different and unique. Um, uh, and there is um, there are a lot of, like I said, any area where you get high intent signal is considered retail media in my definition. And you can capture a lot of this intent signals, whether it is automotive, fashion, uh, healthcare, um, which uh, allows you to unlock the data uh, through fulfillment, if not online, through offline. And there, whether it is a solution that Publicis has uh, through its Epsilon uh, ecosystem, or some of the partners on ground, whether it's Smartcart in Indonesia, they're building a lot of solutions which enables us to identify online signals and to fulfill offline, uh, especially if they're not in the FMCG environment. Yeah, I want to carry on with that a little bit. Um, you, sorry, anything to add there, Jaron? No. No, um, yes, so I want to carry that on a little bit in terms of the monetization and where it goes from having a retail media network, from turning your data into a retail media network, into really make, making it function, making it measurable, and also making it pay. Um, how do you feel about the monetization strategies around retail media networks, and how have they been working, Jaron, from you, from the first-hand point of view? <coughs> For wait, from a fair price group uh, yeah. internal view, right? I think especially for us, there's still a lot more work to be done. <coughs> uh, for us, we're still pretty much building the foundations, getting foundations right, having the right tech stack uh, to be in place as well, so that uh, we can scale ourselves. Up. That's one. I think secondly, it's pretty much on data side of things. So for us, we're still kind of structuring in terms of how do we want to monetize our data, right? And what's relevant for what sort of advertisers and brands out there. So because we do not want to just go out there, tell our, tell our BD folks, say, hey, just go ahead and sell. Uh, that's not pretty much adding value to advertisers or brands as well, right? So we want to approach it more from a consultative kind of approach rather than just a selling way. Yeah, uh, I think internally for us, it's really, for any, retail, for any retailers who wants to, uh, <clears throat> getting to the journey of retail media itself, I think internally itself, uh, I think it's very key for us to have an end in the mind as well, to work backwards. Uh, don't overlook on people. I think that's important. Getting buy-ins from the C-suites folks and the stakeholders as well, right? If they, are, if they have to believe in that, then it makes a lot of things easier. So be it getting investment or so forth, right? Or even them getting to reach out to their network as well. I think it's also important for us to start having use cases as well internally to build before we even reach out to the stakeholders and the C-Suite folks as well. Yeah. yeah, and Rangel, how do you think? See, data is gold. But these gold nuggets are sitting in the mines in the deep crevices of these mines of <laughs> individual retail media environments. And when they are inside in the caves and in the deep uh, crevices, it has no value. It has to be mined, it has to be stitched together, and all those uh, um, wall gardens slash black box environment that exists within each ecosystem needs to be diffused for retail media to truly unleash the power of monetization. We all understand that data is going to give us insights on intensity and intent of the consumer's uh, ability to buy or their propensity to buy. If I'm going to be optimizing in silos, you're wasting a lot of marketers' dollars. And therefore, being able to understand that if I have optimized within the fair price ecosystem, how can I cross-pollinate that into Shopee, into Lazada, through Criteo? Unless that kind of stitch happens and the attribution happens, we'll all be talking about the glory days of retail media and it'll probably pass by us till some competition comes which does this where you're able to identify um, uh, ad campaign ID and link it to a order ID and to know that this ad dollar actually resulted in this sale. If we are able to do that level of integration and that typically will happen outside through a, a third, third party uh, a tech uh, enabler and until that happens we'll just talk about the potential rather than the realization of the potential. So that's my view. Yeah, so about mining the gold to, uh, to bring out the real value. Um, 
I want to talk a little bit about this market and where Southeast Asia in particular is with retail media. Um, where does it fit for you in terms of the, the media outlook of Southeast Asia? How does it fit in with some of the other major trends like social commerce? Uh, Ranga, where do you see retail media? Uh, where's its place at the moment? It's actually a mixed bag. Your earlier question of uh, you know endemic brands versus non-endemic brands. Endemic brands are on the platform across many of our clients. 20 to 40 percent of their sales comes uh, through these retail media environments. Um, so it is actually um, pretty uh, uh, intense in that play. Uh, we've also seen a lot of work happening in the area of uh, social commerce, affiliates, driving sales. In fact. Uh, one of um, a close friend of mine who runs an FMCG business in Vietnam um, runs his entire sales campaigns through affiliates, right? There is no uh, anything else going on. Uh, it's risky, uh, but it works for him right now. Um, so uh, Southeast Asia has ever always been at the forefront of um, social embrace. Um, it leapfrogged the rest of the world when it embraced Facebook. It leapfrogged the rest of the world when it embraced TikTok. Uh, and it is really in the forefront of uh, un utilizing it. And there are a lot of micro, macro influencers who are also powering uh, growth of brands. Uh, so social commerce, affiliate marketing, as well as uh, digital commerce uh, are really uh, growing. Uh, and uh, you can um, go into markets like Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines to get feel the vibe of it. So it's pretty uh, exciting. and. The, TikTok uh, Tokopedia collaboration in Indonesia is a very good example of how uh, marketplace and uh, entertainment platforms come together and create consumer experiences. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, it's a it's a, a commerce first area. It's you know social commerce has grown massively. Jaron, where does it fit for you? Where's the where's the strengths of retail media in uh, in Southeast Asia's ecosystem? I think the strength of retail media in Southeast Asia is pretty much tying, going back to data as well, right? Uh, I think to your point, how how does it compare to like social commerce and such? I think the key for the key. I mean, there are a lot of uh, channels out there as well, right? I think it's key for advertisers and brands to know more about their their customers, like what's how's their shopping journey like, etc. Then it's kind of like how do you fit in be it like retail media or having social commerce as one of the key touch points to engage your target segments as well. I think that's key. Uh, retail media in Southeast Asia, I would also say it's still at a very, it's not at a very mature stage at this point of time. I think there's still a lot more work that can be done as well. Yeah. Yeah, and where does it fit for you in terms of um, an omni-channel approach? How, how important should it be for marketers to, uh, to get involved with the retail media offering? What do you think, Ranga? Like I said, uh, the market is emerging, right? And it's uh, 20, 30% or even in some cases, 40% of the business comes from uh, digital commerce. But uh, unless you integrate your online and offline efforts, both in terms of marketing as well as sales, uh, you're, not gonna, you're gonna leave money on the table. Uh, and therefore, omni-channel approach is a critical element. <coughs> Uh, there are technology uh, partners who are coming on board who are able to stitch things together. Uh, whether it is uh, very integrated to uh, a sales checkout uh, through an app, like Fairprice has as well in this part of the world, yeah. uh, where you're um, uh, tracking your consumer's online behavior to your off in-store app checkout, um, uh, as well as um, in-mall advertising through digital out-of-home where you're able to identify mobile data signals, uh, triangulate it with um, your own first party data against those signals and activate uh, buyer campaigns. Uh, those are pretty meaningful. And I have seen that in some of the quick service restaurant business that we have done. And it really unlocks the true, true value. If you don't do it, then it's at your own peril. You're leaving money on the table. Yeah, it's, you know, it's augmenting what's already out there and becoming a key part of it. Um, Jaron, do you see it as key to, a, to an omni-channel approach? Yep, yeah, omni-channel is definitely key. Uh, I think like what Rangan said, uh, let's not leave the money on the table itself. Uh, definitely, I mean, if I'm in the shoes of advertisers or brand itself, I definitely want to make my investments worth as well, right? Not just doing from the e-commerce side of things, but 
trying to stitch everything right, both online and offline, knowing the behavior, the transactions, etc. So those are key, so important. Excellent. Um, finally, on Southeast Asia and APAC, who's doing it well, do you think, Ranga? Publishers Group is doing exceptionally well. <laughs> I set you up for that one. I, I would say that again, if uh, you want to applaud louder, Publicis Group does extremely well. And uh, uh, to be more serious, uh, we've done, um, um, I just circulated a mail last month on June, uh, June 11th, on the back of the June 6 6 campaign. Uh, there were, Lazada published a leaderboard and across eight categories. And uh, I was very, very uh, impressed and uh, humbled that uh, uh, publicist clients were on top of all the leaderboards, whether it was L'Oreal, Abbott, Hellion, uh, Darley, we were ro rocking it. So to an extent, I think we've cracked that, um, but we're still learning. A big part of that is collaboration. We can't do it alone. Uh, we work with very closely as teams. There are client and uh, stakeholders who are different from your regular uh, uh, media stakeholders who you need to really work closely with. Uh, their partners, whether it is Shopee, Lazada, Criteo, uh, our own internal uh, solution, Epsilon, we have to really work closely to make sure the data gets stitched, the signals are captured, and then uh, you're uh, bringing it back to a meaningful experience for the customer. You have to stop thinking about yourself as a brand, you've got to stop thinking of yourself as a platform, and you've got to start thinking of what the consumer is looking to do and how can I make that person's life easy and s reduce their pains and increase their gains and make them happy. And there is where you get success. So uh, to me, the, uh, a lot of brands are doing it well. Uh, but uh, if anybody wants to know more, uh, reach out to me on my LinkedIn and I will uh, give you some tips. <laughs> um, Jaron, um, how excellently is Fair Price Group doing retail media? <coughs> uh, I would say we're still far from excellence. We're definitely learning from other players, right? I mean, if you talk about Southeast Asia, I think one of the big ones that we're learning from and observing is definitely Grab, for sure, for the omni-channel stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, if we talk about agencies, I would say all have their own key strengths as well. And for FedPrice Group, we definitely still want to work with all these folks as well on <laughs> partnerships, as well, on any data partnerships, yeah. Excellent, good. Um, we are almost running out of time. I just want to flash up the poll question and see how we're doing. Uh, still not well understood. Okay, we've got a bit more work to do. Maybe next year's ATS will uh, will come back, and in this panel will have will have changed everything. Um, guys, before we close, um, I just want to ask, what would your one line pitch be to uh, invest for marketers to invest in retail media networks? Jaron, I'll let you shoot first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would say on fair price group. <laughs> We definitely have a lot of relevant data. Uh, I mean, just come and speak to me after this. Ranga? It's very straightforward. Consumers are there. They are shopping online, and they're shopping offline, and there is this cross-pollination. And if I were a, I'm a statistician by training, but I do a lot of single sample validation. So I check myself how I behave in a shop. I'm going into a pharmacy, I'm looking at my client's product, I want to buy it, and I go online and search for the price. And if I get the same thing online, on fair price, online cheaper than your uh, retail outlet, I place an order in the shop online. So we as consumers are behaving that way, right? And if you're not being there to understand the consumer journey and unlock that through investing both resources and money into that space, you're going to become irrelevant as a brand. It's not about growth, it's about survival, right? If you're not in this environment where you are uh, unlocking the full potential of retail media network to identify signals of high intent consumers and targeting them and creating meaningful experiences, you're gonna become irrelevant. So better get onto the bandwagon if you're not on it and um, each one of us will have different uh, stages of growth. So identify your own organization's culture slash maturity curve uh, and then go on to a crawl, walk, run kind of a philosophy to say if I'm just starting, don't bite more than you can chew. Take a small bite, learn, then scale. And if you're already uh, uh, jogging, 
uh, figure out how you're going to run and sprint. And that's when, you know, uh, my earlier panelist also said, uh, agencies are there to consult you and help you through that process. So work with us uh, to help you with your growth journey. And um, all the best. Lovely way to end it. Thank you both very much for joining me. And thank you all for listening. Um, thank you. Thank you very much.